Hi there, this is James from Junior Developer Central and in this video I'm going to show you a really simple way of sending a post request to a PHP script via Ajax using jQuery. Now there's quite a lot of things that we've just touched upon there but let's just go through those one by one. So um, I'm guessing if you found this video you've got an idea of what Ajax is and possibly also PHP and jQuery itself. Um, but we're going to use all of these three components to actually send a request to the server without having to actually reload the page. So normally when you want to load a fresh page from the server, you've got to send another request to a HTML document or a PHP script. It will send some generated HTML to the browser and then display it. But with Ajax, we can send requests to the server without having to reload the entire page. So let's first of all run through what we've got going on here. Um, I'm running the XAMPP server just so we've got uh, Apache running, which means we can have a web browser running locally on our local machine and also be able to serve PHP files. Speaking of which, I have a PHP script here. It's probably the world's most simplest PHP script ever. Um, basically what it does is the data that's sent to the um, from our Ajax, which we'll write in a second, uh, sends through our data in a special variable called the post variable. And as you can see here, it's an array of variables based on the data that you send through. And all I'm going to do is repeat that back via the PHP script and just make sure it's JSON encoded. So it will send back a, the response in a way that our front end, our, our JavaScript end, can actually understand and interpret the data. So it's almost just repeating back the same data that we're sending to this script. So as I say, not very complicated, but it will just illustrate how you can send data to the back end and also receive a response from it too. So the final component is just a HTML document and it's just a bare bones page at the moment. We're going to be looking in the console for all of the responses that we get, um, but we'll be using this just to send our data to the PHP script and I've already loaded in a latest version of jQuery to enable us to do that. Okay, so how do we actually send a request to the PHP script that's running on our computer? Well, jQuery provides a convenience function and it's called .post. So this will send data to our backend PHP script using the post HTTP method and we can just type our URL in here and because I'm running on XAMPP I have localhost here and the script that I created was just called post.php so you can see that up here in this page. So a really simple way to just get the data back is we just put pass a callback function as the second parameter to that post function and we could just literally just say console.log and in the anonymous function we can just receive the data back and we'll just log that back uh, to the console uh, to see the response from the PHP script. So uh, if we just load up the page and we'll go over to the console uh, you'll see if we look there we'll, we actually get back an empty array which is actually expected because we didn't actually post any data uh, to the script at this point. So let's do that now. Let's just add some data into our request. So if we go back to over to Visual Studio Code. So what we can actually do uh, as the second parameter now, instead of, let's just tidy this up a little bit, instead of passing the function uh, as the second parameter, if we actually pass in some data, so I'll just say name is James and my favorite language is JavaScript. Okay, and then the third parameter now becomes that anonymous function. And uh, let's just tidy that up a little bit. Okay, it's just about all in line. There we go. And now we if we repeat the request again, and just refresh the page and look in the console. You'll see that now comes back. We're still we're getting the response back from the server. So this is the PHP script just sending the data back to us. Um, it may be that it gives us a, a different response if uh, in a more real world scenario. So if it was a login script, it might come back and say whether the login successful or failed. Um, but hopefully you can see that just posting the data from that jQuery call goes to the PHP script and then gets repeated back to us. So that's the basics of sending a post request. Um, let, we can actually neaten up this uh, call now because it's looking a little bit messy. And 
what we can actually do instead of passing in an anonymous function here we can actually chain into jQuery's built-in promise system that it has and if you're not familiar with promises that's fine uh, but this will just show it an alternative way to kind of handle a response from the uh, post request so uh, the first thing we can actually say is just say dot done on the end of that post and you can see uh, it, the dot block there has given us a little bit of an explanation um, but this is the same sort of thing as that anonymous function uh, that we just had a second ago and just to show you that if I just re refresh the page again and go back to the console you'll see we've got exactly the same response so it's the same way of doing it but it's just made it a little bit neater and we could maybe just put all that on one line get rid of that comma there and maybe have something like that that looks a lot neater and there's actually a couple of other things that you can uh, chain onto this promise stream here so we can actually chain on to that uh, fail and then we'll say that will be if an error occurs uh, so we could say console.error and then just display the error out and then finally we can also say uh, what happens regardless of whether there was a success or whether there was an error come back so we can say console.log and just say done so I'm using ES6 arrow functions here and if you're not familiar with those I have another video which will explain those in details which I'll put a link to in the description. Okay so let's actually just save that and go back to the console and refresh the page. So we pretty much get the same response again. We've got the JavaScript. We have the response from the PHP script where it's JSON encoded our uh, post data that we've sent but we also now get this message saying that it's done and that's because the always uh, part of the promise chain always completes and this line of code will always run when this post request is sent. So just to demonstrate the error uh, system and what happens there uh, so say the server was unavailable or something and I'll just replicate that just by changing the name of the script to something so that obviously that file doesn't exist anymore and so if I refresh the page now you'll see I get this uh, message saying that the URL wasn't found but I also get this response object back um, which has lots of data that we can work with to kind of handle our failure to do certain tasks uh, and you can see the most useful thing there is the status code and the status text so let's just kind of utilize the status text to give the user at least the uh, the console user a bit of a more clearer message as to what's gone on so you can see now if we have an unavailable URL we'll get a failure come back and we can handle that in some sort of way on our front end. So that's really just scratch the surface of what you can do with Ajax requests specifically with posting data to a server. Uh, as I mentioned in one of the examples before it might be a login system where you're posting a username and password and then you need to authenticate and actually uh, return a response whether that's a logged in response or a, an error message in some way but it can all be done by sending these post requests to a back-end script and it doesn't have to be PHP um, but more often you'll find jQuery, Ajax and PHP going quite hand in hand together uh, with these technologies working together to form a more cohesive system. So I hope you found this tutorial useful if you did just drop me a comment and like the video just to let me know and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more web development tips and tricks.